My friends, uh, I'm really grateful to be present here, I mean to be invited here for the purpose of uh, remembering my very close friend Orun Indudash, my friend Orun, whom most of the people, irrespective of age, knows him as Orun Da. Even the uh, nephews and nieces, they used to call him Orunda Mama or or Orunda Kaka. It's like that. He was Orunda for everyone, whether he is of the age of 10 or at the age of 80. He was Orunda for everyone. And I miss him very much. He came to India in the month of December. We had uh, some gala time together. And when I went out uh, of Calcutta for some uh, tour, I suddenly came to know that he has been admitted to a hospital with a very bad lungs. He had some very bad infection in the lungs. And ultimately, we lost him on the 2nd of February. It was a great shock for me. I have been his friend for the last almost 70 years starting from the school days, and uh, I have never lost contact with him ever during this period of uh, almost 70 years. And uh, we actually started uh, in a school. We were in different sections. You know, in, we were in the same class. We are of the same age within uh, maybe a couple of weeks only, difference of only a couple of weeks. So, but we were in different sections in the class, and uh, I uh, somehow we we had a very great affinity for each other because we were complementing each other in whether it is it was in studies, whether it was in music, or whatever it is. In fact, I remember he came to my place just after the. Uh, this test examinations when we were supposed to appear for the uh, this um, school final examination. And uh, at that time, he came to me telling me that, uh, well, I am not understanding this particular language. It, uh, we had to study Sanskrit at that time. He said, it is sounding just like Chinese to me, and I don't understand anything. Can you help me? I said, okay. Somehow or other, I have got a little bit of uh, um, understanding of that language. Uh, let us sit together. So on that day, we sat together the whole day. And I tried to explain to him uh, something about Sanskrit. Somehow, he liked my uh, communication with him in such a manner that he, while he was leaving, he just told me, if I come to you for studying uh, other subjects also, do you mind? I said, no, of course not. Because I always find if someone is with me, I can study much better. Alone, I just uh, get lost. So I said that it was a great, it was a boon to me. So I said, certainly you come every day. No problem. You stay the whole day and we'll start uh, studying together. You mind you that there was only uh, two or three months before the uh, final examination. So we studied together all the subjects, whether it was mathematics, whether it's geography, whether it is history. We will all study together for the three months before the exams. And uh, he somehow found that interacting with me is very easy for him. And uh, uh, once he said that, well, I don't understand the subject so well, right at the beginning. He said that uh, perhaps my brain is not uh, all that sharp. I said, the see, it is very difficult to find a person who is a genius, like, say, for instance, uh, Einstein or Newton. Such genius are very rare in the whole world. Only a few, amongst a few, Crores. And similarly, you must understand that it is really very, very difficult to find out an idiot. We are all 
average people and it is all how we study, how we try to understand the things, that makes all the difference. I mean, in the exams, uh, well, studying for the exams is a different question, but if you want to learn a subject, then you have to try to learn it. Somehow it impressed him and all his life he actually studied a subject not for the exams but for understanding the subject and that gave him a lot of confidence in everything. And later on I found that in his life he taught his own children. He never trusted anyone else to teach his children and his children naturally became extremely sharp and very, very good students also. So that was a very interesting thing. So we studied together and then after we uh, completed the school final examination, we started studying in different colleges. I was in St. Xavier's College, he was in Charuchandra College. But we never stopped studying together. For the whole two years, when um, uh, we were studying the intermediate science, at that time there was no higher secondary, it was the intermediate science. It was more or less the same, but it was studied in the college. So we were in two different colleges, yet we studied together the whole, the entire two years period, and both of us gained by that. And mind you, that study was not studying only the books. It was studying uh, the books, of course, but it was the whole day we spent together, we used to chat, we used to sing, we used to play music, and that was the whole day's program. And that is how he actually uh, started music at that time very much. Earlier he was interested in it, but that time he started uh, writing some scores for music, some uh, the wordings, that means the lyrics for music, he started writing at that time. And uh, initially he started, the, uh, when he left uh, the college and went into the engineering college for studying uh, this uh, uh, architecture, then he started enjoying writing some uh, this uh, parodies of some uh, well-known songs. That was his starting with these songs. And we were studying together. We started learning guitar. At that time, Spanish guitars were not there. At that time, we were playing Hawaiian guitar. Now, we, I bought a guitar and we, I started learning. And Orun also started learning from me. We started to, uh, we learned together. And he also bought a guitar, which was by chance a Hofner, a German Hofner guitar. We didn't know the difference between a Hofner and Indian guitar or Italian guitar, we never knew that. We got that as a Hawaiian guitar. One day, when we started replacing the strings of the guitar, they were, they were worn out, then we opened the guitar, we found that the nut fell down. And then we found that it was a Spanish guitar. It was not a Hawaiian guitar, since Hawaiian guitars uh, were uh, in vogue, Spanish guitars nobody used to know or play, so uh, they just converted into a Hawaiian guitar, which was originally a Hofner uh, Spanish guitar of excellent quality. And then he started trying his hand, because we were uh, earlier we were playing only Hawaiian guitar, so he started playing. But one thing very important, when I started playing Hawaiian guitar, I learned from one Guanese teacher. I didn't learn in uh, the, the Bengali music with Hawaiian guitar. I learned it from a very well-known uh, uh, this uh, uh, band uh, uh, violinist. He was an excellent violinist, but he knew music uh, very well. So he taught me music, and that was in Western style. Therefore, I had a, an understanding of the Western style of music. I developed some, and then I started working on it. And earlier we were playing Indian music, but that time we started uh, this uh, Western music also. 
and I started to, uh, we were playing Hawaiian guitar, but after learning this Western music, I found that this standard style of playing Hawaiian guitar was just playing one string, just playing the song on one string. But since I learned Western music to some extent, then I started using the Hawaiian guitar for playing chords in it and playing the songs with the chords by properly organizing the, uh, this configuration. So that way, he also, Orun also started learning with me. So then he also developed a lot of clear conception of what chords are, how the chords should be organized and that. And then when he went to the engineering college, there he started, uh, I mean, playing this Spanish guitar very much. He started uh, practicing on Spanish guitar. We bought a lot of books. I did not continue with uh, guitar anymore, but he started learning Spanish guitar on his own at that time. And also he used to play uh, Hawaiian guitar also. And then he started, as I told you, with uh, these uh, parodies of some well-known songs. And they became so popular in, the, in those days in, in the, this uh, B college, then he became very popular amongst the boys. But he never tried to uh, spread his songs to outside. I mean, to general people. It was only um, uh, closed among his own friends. Later on, he left India and went and settled in UK. Once he settled in UK, since he was having a lot of interest in uh, uh, this uh, Spanish guitar, he started learning finger style Spanish guitar. It was the uh, classical Spanish guitar style. He started learning it. And when he started learning Spanish guitar finger style, then he started writing songs for suiting the uh, guitar accompaniment. So that way, he started writing songs. And the first book that he uh, compiled was called Chaita Red Gun. That means song for the six strings. That means you understand the guitar. The songs were so beautifully suited for guitar uh, accompaniment. He used to play guitar. He learned guitar there properly. He uh, learned classical guitar. And then it, he was very well equipped to accompany his own songs with guitar. And then he started singing also. Earlier, he never used to sing. He was playing only guitar. But later on, he started singing because the songs he wrote was in him. Actually, it was in his own self. So therefore, his voice was not a very good singer's voice. But because of the emotion, <coughs> the songs were liked. When he came to Calcutta, when he used to come to Calcutta on leave, he used to be with his friends and he used to sing those songs to us. And we used to appreciate. Whosoever heard those songs, they started appreciating him. He became popular with his friends, his uh, younger juniors. A lot of people from the B college started learning his songs. But he was particularly averse to publishing his songs in the public. That means not in the public domain, not re making records or um, this, uh, your um, cassettes or things like that. He was totally against it. Some people tried, when his songs became popular amongst the, uh, his uh, friends, his disciples, and uh, the juniors in, in the B college, a lot of people started play, uh, singing his songs, but he never wanted to publish his songs in, in the usual public domain. So he already developed a huge gathering of his fans. I can call them fans who were singing his song, who were playing guitar to play those songs because he set up the style how to play guitar with a Bengali song 
that was a wonderful experience for anyone. So a lot of boys, young boys, they started learning his songs and playing his songs the way he used to play or he used to sing. So that way, he became very popular amongst his own cast of this uh, class of his uh, fans, I can tell them, or his appreciators, those who used to uh, like him, love his songs. Uh, his songs were recorded also by one of his fans. He was a, uh, this, uh, he had a studio, so he called Orun just to record his songs. He never used to sell that song, those uh, cassettes or CDs or DVDs, but he used to distribute it amongst his people who used to like his songs. It was a very wonderful experience. And these persons are still here. When he came, when he used to come every year, Orun used to come to Calcutta to meet his uh, friends. And um, whenever he used to come to Calcutta, lot of people used to call him, take him to their arena, their houses, their uh, groups, and used to ask him to sing and teach them to sing. And that kind of, um, I mean, it was an experience for him and which he never used to forget. And he used to come every year. I think for the last uh, uh, 60 years or so, he had been in UK. And I think every year he must have come at least once, sometimes twice. And that was only for the traction of his friends, his uh, well-wishers, and his uh, appreciators, those who used to love him for them. So this time also he came here, I think with the same uh, intention. But it was a very sad day that he suddenly fell sick. I think Calcutta has got a lot of uh, very bad uh, infection, particularly lung infection. You know about the situation of pollution in Calcutta. I think that is what got him. See, he got a uh, very bad infection in his lung and eventually we lost him. It was a great loss for me and for every one of his friends and his uh, disciples and also his, uh, the, the persons who used to love him. So I'm very sorry that we lost him, but will, he will remember, yeah, he will be remembered in our lives. We have got the songs amongst us, a lot of people know his songs, sing his songs. You can find millions of them in the, um, this, uh, say for instance, the YouTube. You'll find a lot of songs sung by a lot of people and also by himself. Orun's songs have been published in the, uh, this uh, YouTube. A lot of people listen to them and a lot of people sing his songs in different ways, but Mostly people sing, of course, with a guitar because his songs are, amp I mean, specially suited for guitar accompaniment. Thank you very much for organizing this, uh, this uh, memorial. Thank you very much.